I thought I'd take a look at uh, two tunnels. Uh, everyone's probably heard of the famous uh, Chinese submarine tunnel. tunnel. Uh, and there's also another one up in, uh, up in uh, uh, the, the uh, Soviet Arctic or the Russian Arctic. Um, basically, uh, one tunnel is real and the other one's fake. The CIA discovered this thing back in uh, 68, um, but um, a couple of gentlemen, John Lewis and uh, Kai Lite from uh, Stanford University, wrote, wrote, did a write up on it in 96, which got me interested. They really referenced it as being this gigantic sea cave tunnels, concealed, camouflage, hard against attack. And so it was just daunting to understand where it was, and this is what they wrote. Um, I sort of bolded out what I thought, and it just seemed to be impossible <coughs> to look for. Uh, and this was an era before Google Earth. So I was thinking like something like this is like a NORAD or something from uh, some James Bond movie. You're never going to find it. Uh, and so I finally found it, but I was working for a proprietary company. I couldn't release it or what else. Uh, as soon as Google Earth put it up online, they, they blogged it, and it's very famous. But the, it is hardened. It's got 200 feet of overburden, which in nuke speed means, it means it's pretty hardened. However, uh, one JDM on the tunnel entrance, and you seal up all the subs that are in there. So it's not really, it was designed in the 60s back when uh, bombs were imprecise. Here is a corona photo of, uh, of it being constructed in 68. You can see the uh, Chinese are filling in that entire bay, that lagoon, with uh, mud and dirt. dirt. Eventually, it's going to be filled in. And that's going to be the above ground base. And now here it is in uh, 2006, or 2011. And uh, you can see that they filled that entire area in. That's the above ground facilities for training for uh, docking the uh, submarines for maintenance. And there's a large underground cavern. The, uh, the tunnel that they used to bore it was, uh, we believe, a horizontal uh, boring machine. And first, to do that, they had to build a coffer dam at the bottom. They went across all the way through. And in this, this satellite photo from uh, 70, you can see the exit. Here it is in 2011, and they tried to camouflage the exit, but it's, it's, uh, it's, it's there if you know where to look for it. Um, and uh, in the way, it's 800,000 cubic meters of uh, dirt. This is a U2 oblique image taken in 71, uh, and you can see uh, the exit on the, on the, uh, the west side and they're still building the coffer dam, they're still digging it. So what this goes to show is that uh, this stuff is historic and useful, even though it's obsolete. This is a uh, uh, document that, that was generated in the 1980s by the then Reagan administration to try to sell the Cold War. And there are a whole series of these things. Whenever you have a product, you have to have a brochure. This was an a, a artist rendition of a uh, submarine base up in the northern, northern, northern fleet. And in this facility, they claim, or they say there might be two tunnels. You can see both going in and out. And gigantic uh, facility. Turns out that uh, this is a, that, that graphic or cartoon is actually a composite of three areas of this one facility up in uh, Bolshoi Litza. Uh, you can see some uh, attack uh, <coughs> subs in this one photo. Here's uh, one of the uh, three t remaining Typhoon class submarines, and there's a, a Blowing dye dry dock. In the next photo, we'll see the uh, the crane that they use to, uh, to to load the missiles on the subs. But I looked at this facility and the other ones all around the Soviet Union, the former Soviet Union. I can't find a single tunnel in any of them. There is one tunnel on the west coast, uh, uh, east of Vladivostok, but it was under construction and never used during the Cold War. So, so that document um, we have a uh, submarine fleet that's almost the size of uh, the current Russian fleet, which is not too big. It's, it's gone down quite a bit. So that document really, in this era, couldn't be written the way it was. My second example is, uh, this is a graphic from a, a uh, 1990s document in North Korea, uh, which is not available online, nowhere, and shows the, uh, the infamous uh, reactor at Yongbyon with two cooling towers. Uh, and this is the, the, the Landsat photo that goes with it. They've got the uh, reactor right in the middle of the river. Um, it's really hard to see the way they've, uh, they've, they've rendered this. Now, this you couldn't get away with this now because with Google Earth, you can look at this thing and see it in detail. There it is. There is the current reactor. It doesn't look pristine, beautiful. There's only one cooling tower, and now it's been demolished. So, uh, 
basically the kind of propaganda and the documents that were generated in the 1980s and 90s just are not, you're not able to do that. Here is overview of the Yongbyon area as of 07, and you can see the river. Uh, I didn't annotate the whole thing, but basically, if you compare both both images, they're just, they're, they're not attainable. My last photo is, uh, this is an aerial photo taken by a, a CIA spy plane, a CIA version of the SR-71 in 68, and this is uh, one of the very few photos no one's ever seen of, of what was in the Yongbyon reactor. So, thank you very much. Thank you.